Right. Well, that is that. Now, Mike. Uh, Mike is a colleague here, uh, one of the key members of this center, and he is going to talk about one, the second of the three focus that we have. I have this theory that um, the higher the number of computer scientists in a room, the greater the probability that the laptop will fail in some catastrophic way that nobody can fix. <laughs> and that's been borne out today, of course. Um, I'm very excited to be here today. Um, I, it is my belief that there is really nowhere that the idea of taking huge amounts of data and really extracting meaning and understanding from all of that data is more important than in the fields of medicine and the health sciences. And uh, that's one of our major emphases here in the Noesa Center. If this morning you read a newspaper and heard about some amazing new innovation in health science, some new drug, or better understanding of cancer. If on the way over here you listened to the radio and you heard about something that really changed the way that we understand how organisms um, evolve over time, there's a very good chance that if you look into it, you will find that it was not just one biologist saying Eureka that was behind that discovery. More and more today, the people behind that discovery are likely to be an integrated team of researchers, statisticians, computer scientists, biologists and doctors all working together to analyze the huge amounts of data that come from modern biology experiments. That provides an amazing opportunity, provided you have the capability to analyze those kinds of large data sets. And that's the capability that we are bringing together here in the Noesis Center. To do that, you have to bring people from various disciplines together. Scientists and government recognize that this is a really important opportunity an opportunity to really change our understanding and uh, ability to, um, to influence human health. If you look at the number of papers that are published that are coming from multidisciplinary teams involving computer scientists, biologists, and doctors, you find that the number is increasing unbelievably fast. If you look at the amount of money that federal um, organizations like the National Institutes of Health are investing in research that involves multidisciplinary groups of computer scientists and life scientists together, you find that the growth is staggering because they recognize the opportunities that are there. The challenges that are there are also uh, very large, just like the opportunities are. The languages of uh, medicine and of biology and of computer science are very different. Um, it's been recognized that in their freshman year, a student taking a freshman biology course will actually learn more new terms than an entire first year of a foreign language. A computer scientist getting together with a biologist has a lot of understanding to attain before they can even begin to communicate about the problems at hand. But we in the Noesis Center have demonstrated excellence in crossing those disciplinary boundaries. Our collaborators and team members include toxicologists, neuroscientists, protein scientists, pediatricians, clinical psychologists, and many other areas of, of study investigating problems that have um, you know, immense importance for the human condition. I want to briefly, I could give you many, many different stories of some of our collaborative efforts and how it's taken teams of people from different disciplines to pursue and achieve the successful results we've uh, had in the past. Um, but given the limited time, I'm just going to quickly tell you about a couple of them. One of them comes from a collaboration between the Air Force Research Laboratory um, and, uh, and the Noesis Center and, and some other faculty here at Wright State University. A couple of years back, the Air Force was faced with a challenging problem. They wanted to be able to determine whether a soldier had been exposed to some sort of toxic compound, even if the exposure level was low enough that there are no overt signs uh, of that exposure. Um, one of our uh, partners in Noesis, Dr. Nick Rio, had the capability using NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, to measure thousands of different small molecules in biofluids like urine and blood at one time. Um, but he recognized that um, analyzing that data is a challenge. Each experiment produced thousands and thousands of measurements. Um, it was beyond the capability of any scientist to take a quick look at the results of those experiments and identify what are the differences that have been induced by this toxin. 
So to gain meaning from all of that data, Dr. Neo, Dr. Rio, excuse me, Nick, um, got together with other scientists, including myself and Noesis, and we generated a web-based system that allowed him to gather, annotate, manage, visualize, and analyze all of that metabolomic data in a way that really changed the way that the research is done. Now we do that research together in a large multidisciplinary team, and we're proposing to the federal government to, uh, to obtain funds to make this a standard so that other teams across the country can do their research in a similar way. Another example of success, our Center for Healthy Communities, led by another one of our partners in Noesis, Dr. Catherine Colley, has recently been entrusted by the Social Security Administration to serve as a regional hub for the collection of electronic health records to be transmitted to the Social Security Administration. This brings to the Noesis Center not only around a million dollars of funded research, but also the opportunity to be at the forefront of creating systems that can really understand and manage that complex and uh, very large set of data. These are just a few examples of how, by crossing disciplinary boundaries, we've taken data and information and moved into the realms of knowledge and understanding. As a center, we hope to have the opportunity to continue to expand those collaborations, to work with doctors and scientists um, across various disciplinary boundaries, to really do that more in the future and gain understanding that is right there in front of us, but confounded by the fact that the data sets are so large. The third of our major areas of emphasis is in defense and aerospace research and development, and particularly in cognitive science and human effectiveness. And here to tell you more about that today is the, um, the chair of our Department of Psychology, Dr. Don Flack. <laughs> 